I'd like to disagree um, with a couple of things that you've, you've said in the dark. It seems to me that it's counterintuitive that the whole development of uh, human beings started in Africa because uh, particularly in New Guinea, there seems to have regressed uh, there somewhere into an, an ancient form uh, of skeleton. It, it would seem to me that it could have just as easily started started there. Presumably, it came over from Java Man. Uh, yeah, you're, you're thinking there of Homo erectus, this earlier species. And um, yes, I mean, some people have argued that features of that earlier species, Homo erectus, are seen to continue in, in the Far East, for example, in, in Australia. Um, personally, I, I don't see those features there. I think that the robusticity we see, for example, in some early Australians is exactly the robusticity we see here in these early African people. And of course the DNA evidence, I mean, DNA of people in New Guinea and, and Australia, those who live there today, their DNA completely falls within the range we'd expect of people who descended recently from African populations. So there's nothing there to suggest there are outliers. And, um in Mungo Man, it seemed to me that that was a, a gracial skeleton, uh, where the Aborigines feel that that was an ancestor that they didn't know. Um, and I, I can't yes, understand I mean, the, what happened. The there. Mungo individuals are quite lightly built, and there are other people, as you, I'm sure you know, in the if you like, in, in, in Africa. Um, but uh, yes, Australia is an interesting test case because it does show an awful lot of variation. But the DNA evidence is pretty conclusive that Australians are closely related to us and all of us, in fact, come from Africa within the recent past. Does anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> you must have been extremely excited when you found out about this uh, this, this find, um, because you've been working in this area for so long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what is it like to find something like this? Yeah, I mean, it was wonderful. I mean, obviously, I, um, I was in touch. I knew that they had found important material, but of course, this material was actually found back in 1997, and they had been working slowly and carefully on this material ever since to reconstruct the bones, to study them, to get them dated, to get all the archaeology and everything else looked at. So, yes, when, last year when I actually saw the papers that were submitted to Nature for for publication. It, yeah, it was very exciting to see these pictures. It was a, a dream come true, really, and, uh, you know, I, it's marvellous they found this stuff, and uh, I wish I'd found something like that. You know. <laughs> There's a degree of jealousy here, but I'm very pleased it's turned yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's terribly difficult for them because they've had to keep it a secret for so long as well, so many years. <laughs> Abs absolutely, yes, but if it's going to be published in Nature or Science, obviously there's an embargo policy, and, and the journals you know, probably quite reasonably want to keep these big stories until they're ready to be fully published. Mm. So do you think that we, we have found... We, we have found all the different lines, um, lineages that we're going to find of our sort of um, ancestors now. Or, I mean, this one, presumably, we didn't expect to find this new subspecies of Homo sapiens. Mm. Do you think that we might find more? Well, I think it shows us, yes, what, we've, what we're still missing from the evidence that, um, as you saw on that map, and maybe we can just go back to it for a moment, um, look how concentrated the finds are on, on one side of Africa. Um, there are parts of Africa where we know from the stone tools people were living there 150,000 or 200,000 years ago we have no fossil evidence of what that people look like so the picture we have got is, is still a limited one there are parts of Africa with good evidence and other parts for which we have nothing so even within Africa there are many unanswered questions and then that's not to mention as the gentleman said Australia um, you know, those people who turn up in Australia 50 or 60,000 years ago where did they come from can we track their migration through if they came out of Africa, there should be fossils tracking that migration right through southern Asia, and we have more or less no fossil evidence of that at the moment. I'm sure it will be found, but you know, there's a lot missing there. 
I wonder if it's something that will ever be solved, really, whether we'll ever, we'll ever really find out whether we descended from people in Africa or whether, whether we all sort of evolve simultaneously across the whole world and whether people will ever be satisfied. I think we won't satisfy everyone. There, there'll always be some people who, I mean, I think they're on record as saying that, that they will never accept that it wasn't uh, a pure out of Africa evolution, whatever evidence suggests. They just aren't, aren't going to accept that it can be true. Um, so I think you'll never please everyone, but uh, I think the evidence builds very strongly that we do have a recent African origin. As I say, there are still details of that story, as I would see them, in Europe and in the Far East, in Australia, where we don't yet know the process of establishment of modern humans in detail. But I think, given time, that picture will, will gradually emerge. Well, then, finally, just before we close, I'll just offer any more, any more comments from, from our audience here. In that case... Uh, yes, anybody? I think another oh, yeah. question there. Um, it's fascinating to me that life must have originated from out of space somewhere. Well, it may have originated on Earth, that's still not certain. But it, it had to come from space originally before Earth formed. There had to be something out there... It could have evolved on, on Earth. On Earth, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a great person believing the Bible, but I'm quite fascinated that they talk about sky people uh, in, in the Bible, and uh, the fact that they knew that the earth was collected from dust, uh, and that I find quite extraordinary. And I wonder who these sky people were. Yeah, I mean, there are many different legends. Obviously, people have their own sort of creation stories and histories, and yeah, many of them talk about people coming down from the skies, from gods visiting. But of course, bear in mind that uh, you know, if you, if you don't know the cause of lightning, for example, that's a very powerful force and it's easy to invoke the idea that there is some, some creature up there which is producing that, that very powerful force. So, uh, you know, my view certainly is that life probably did originate on the Earth. It may have originated on Mars as well, completely independently. There are, of course, some people who believe that it may have even been transported through space, uh, for example, on meteorites. So, you know, life on Earth might have been seeded from Mars. But I think the majority opinion is still that it grew up on Earth. Um, yeah. And you're going to be pursuing your out of Africa theory, so hopefully you'll be able to uh, continue to, to find more evidence to prove your theory. Thank <laughs> you. Chris Stringer, thank you very much for coming along today, and thank you to thank you. everybody for participating in the discussion. For those of us in the audience here, um, do come up and uh, have a look at the specimens that Chris has brought along today, and I'm sure Chris will stay around for another 10 minutes or so. So thank you also to our web audience today, and finally, thank you very much to pa paleontologist Chris Stringer. Thank you.